Remember how I said we should add that boilerplate code to the discount component just in case anything might need to change with it? Well, it turns out the folks over at Awesome Inc. need to be able to edit the discount type. And they've added a new discount type because they found out that world famous drummer Bolakata Kande is one of their most loyal customers. So we went ahead and updated the UI to be ready for those changes, but you can see it's not actually doing anything yet. When I select the famous drummer discount, nothing happens. So how are we going to implement that? In the old days of Angular, we would just use two-way binding and just directly alter the discount type on our customer model and just save it as is. We would pass back and forth the discount type between the customer detail component and the discount component, and we wouldn't think anything of that. In the last couple of years though, that type of two-way data binding has been deprecated in favor for one-way data binding and for one-way data flow. We're not gonna go way in depth into one-way data flow right now, but the idea is that we only want our data changing in one place. We don't wanna mutate our data in too many places. So the way to implement this with one-way data flow is actually to pass around functions that update the data in only one place. Let's go take a look at the code and we'll figure out what to do next. I've got our discount template open and you can see that I've embellished it quite a bit. We've added an edit discount section and we've got a couple buttons that show and hide based on an edit discount variable. One calls a function edit discount type and the other calls a function update discount type. In our select for ng options, our ng model is what we're calling selected discount. This is where we start using one-way data flow instead of two-way binding. If we were using two-way binding, we just bind this model directly to the customer discount and select it from there. And then we'd have the save button call our save that would save the, the new discount onto the model. In the real world, that would be an API call to a put function. We're gonna take a different approach in order to start implementing one-way data flow in our application. So we're gonna select the new discount type and then using that, we're gonna call a function that we've passed from the customer detail component into the discount component. And that function, which is a binding, is gonna actually call the customer detail components update function, which will set the discount for the customer object on there instead of in the discount component itself. So let's get started. Let's go over to customer detail and write that function. Underneath our dollar on init function, I'll write an update discount function that takes a discount in and then just sets vm.customer.discount equal to the discount we're passing in. We're making this super simple right now and we're not worrying too much about putting this back to the server and updating it. None of that will change with any of this new data flow stuff. You just do that in the same way that you would right now just by calling the customer service and calling your put endpoint. Now we need to pass that function in as a binding to our discount component. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just add that to the HTML where we refer to our component. We'll go to the customer detail template. I'm gonna break this out onto a couple of lines so you can see this better. And I'm gonna pass this as an update binding and refer to $CTRL.UpdateDiscount with the discount parameter in there. Great. Now let's move over to our discount component and update that. The first thing we need to do is add a binding underneath customer discount. We called it update, and we're going to use a binding type we haven't seen yet in this course, which is the ampersand binding. And the ampersand specifies a callback. Now we'll just call that function in our update discount type function that the save button calls on click. 
in order to pass our selected discount up to the customer detail component, we need to make an object that has the discount parameter that we referred to in the template as the key of the object property, and then our selected discount as the value. When AngularJS parses this, it looks for that key value combination in an object in order to pass up the function parameters in the correct way. In the next video, we'll just double check that this is working right, and we'll step through the code so you can see the flow of how the discount is getting passed up to the customer detail component.